not up there. Down there, that's my office. And that's me, Marlowe, hard at work on a new computer for my boss, the legendary Mr. Leo Dullo. At closing time, I leave the world of the El Dello Computer Company and enter the world of Marlowe and the Magic Movie Machine, a world I've made. Hey, follow me. Hi, Marlowe. Hi, Machine, and welcome, everybody. To another session of Marlowe and the Magic Movie Machine. I press the button. And I show the pictures. You see, Machine and I were looking at some old film the other night, and we came across a sensational solution for all of you who have trouble keeping your tiger amused. This can be a real problem, mm. especially if you live in a big city. Right. I mean, after all, how many times can you take your tiger to the movies? Well, we have the answer. Six, seven, nine, four, Marlowe. Okay. Six, seven, nine, four, Marlowe. Now, if you have a tiger, take notes. If you don't happen to have a tiger, think about getting one. Tigers have always loved wheels, but since they can't drive, it helps to have a chauffeur. If you're a tiger, they're off to the zoo. Some people say tigers don't like the zoo. Well, that's not necessarily true. It just depends on which side of the fence they're on. The polar bears and most of the other animals seem pleased to see Tammy the tiger. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't pleased to see her. On the other hand, Tammy Tiger's boyfriend isn't too happy about it all. He wants her back. I think that was Tammy's ex-boyfriend. Only time this tiger wants to see the zoo is as a visitor. I don't blame Tammy at all. And there you have it. Helpful hints to the tiger owners. Remember, you saw it here. Here's something else you can see here. Famous people born on the same date that you were born. Tell us when your birthday is. And if your card or letter is chosen, we'll show some other interesting people who have their birthday parties the same day you do. Mm -hmm. Hey, we have a very interesting date today, Machine. November the 2nd. Oh, that's an incredible date. Marlo, who sent it in? Well, Machine, a young lady born on November 2nd, Karen Lynn Mocknock of Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. Happy birthday, Karen Lynn. And Christina Beatty of Council Bluffs, Iowa. H.P. Christina. And uh, Daniel Marquis of Rocky Point, New York. H.P. Dan. Now, Marlo, if you'll press 1-1 one, one for November the 11th month mm -hmm. and 2 for the 2nd of November, yep. I will scan my memory banks and come up with some fan... Fantastic November seconders. You got it, buddy. One, one for November the 11th month and two for the second day. Happy birthday, Karen, Christina, Christina and Daniel, and a great birthday game for the rest of us. Twenty Americans cheered for Warren Harding, born on November 2nd, 1865, in Blooming Grove, Ohio. Warren Harding was the 29th president of the United States of America. Here's Daniel Boone, born on November 2nd, 1734, in Pennsylvania. Daniel Boone blazed trails through the wilderness for our early American settlers. Actor Burt Lancaster was born on November 2nd, 1913 in New York City. He became a major star in his very first film, The Killers, back in 1946. Some of his other famous films are Elmer Gantry, Birdman of Alcatraz, and The Crimson Pirate. Burt Lancaster was a circus acrobat before becoming an actor. Hey, he's good! Actor Burt Lancaster, President Warren Harding, and pioneer Daniel Boone, all born on November 2nd, the same day as Karen, Christina, and Daniel. That's quite a trio. A president of the United States, a big movie star. And one of my heroes, Daniel Boone. I, I can see him a coming across the mountain trail. 
a wearing his coonskin hat and a carrying his Kentucky long rifle. He called her Old Bess. Hey, he was a real hero, wasn't he, Marlowe? Oh, he certainly was, Machine. Of course he was. You know, he lived in more adventuresome times when a, when a fellow had a chance to be a hero, you know? You really think you had more of a chance to be heroic way back then, Marlowe? Absolutely no question, Machine. I mean, go out in the woods a couple of hundred years ago, you could wrestle a bear before breakfast. <laughs> try and do that today and a forest ranger will arrest you for bothering the animals that's true you know you know machine i've often wished i could have lived back then really yeah really would you like to visit those good old days marlo <laughs> would i hey does mark like mindy well i can arrange that i can take you to a place that's over 200 years old it's an old town in one of the 13 original colonies Hot diggity, how do we do it? Well, just open up the big door. Opening up the big door, yeah, even as just you say it. And open the door. Okay, machine. Yeah. Right. Oh, machine, you put on some weight. <laughs> oh. Now, now, yep. now you walk out, and you'll find yourself in Old Town 200 years ago. Okay, here I go. Uh, uh, just one thing, machine. Yeah? Uh, can you get me back here? Can I? Did I get you back from Australia and Thailand and all those places? Well, yeah, but see, over 200 years ago, I mean, well, what, what if you break down, Michelle? Oh, don't worry about a thing, Marlo. I won't break down. All right, here I go. Bye, machine. I don't think I'll break down. Well, let's follow along with Marlo. Here we are in Old Town. 200 years back in time. Marlo's on his way. These people 200 years ago were happy people, happy to be free. In the countries they'd come from, many of them couldn't even worship in the church of their own choice. How they could in America. They made their own candles to light their homes and grew their own vegetables and ate them fresh every day. No freezers or refrigerators then, no cars or trucks either. But plenty of horses. Horses were your wheels 200 years ago. And the blacksmith shop was your local service station. It was very important to see that the shoe fit the horse, or the horse wouldn't be able to do his job. In just a few minutes, Marlo's going to get a chance to be the village smithy. There's Marlo on his way to get a checkup for my old friend, Dr. Claire. Doc is going to tell Marlo he's got a touch of dropsy. That's too much water in the body, a common ailment 200 years ago. Hello, doctor. Well, I'm glad to see you, Marlo. You have not been following my instructions, and your dropsy is getting worse. What? If you do not follow my instructions, there will be so much of the putrid elements in your blood that I will have to do a bleeding. Uh, and this will have to be filled with your blood in order to get you to replace the new blood. Now, let me listen to your heart, just to make sure that you're not doing badly. Well, you could be worse, but you certainly are bad enough. I have prepared, especially for you, a fresh compounding of foxglove. And here's one of them, and, you, and here's another one to start, and you take one every three hours for one full week. If you follow my instructions, I feel sure that you will be better, but you must follow instructions and come back in one week. Okay, doctor. <clears throat> Thank you. Machine, I felt great when I came in. Oh, he's kidding, Marlo. You were kidding, weren't you, Doc? Marlo continues his visit to Old Town after this. That fruitful painting looks good enough to eat. Hey, that would be a far-out breakfast. Look out, stomach, here it comes. Well, if you're that hungry for the flavors of fruit, put down your painting and follow my snoot. Follow my nose. Take that bird's beak. It always knows. Mmm, crazy fruit flavors. Kellogg's Fruit Loop cereal. Orange, lemon, cherry with other natural flavors. Fortified to be part of a good breakfast and a smart start for your day. Fruit Loops are a thing of beauty. I've always had a nose for art. This is me when I was an Eskimo. This is me when I get very old. This is a rocket to the moon. This is a thing that lives in outer space. This is me when I get to be a supersonic being. Get into their imaginations. This 
is messy mob. His room is a mess. His clothes are a mess. The only time he doesn't make a mess is when he makes his chocolate milk. He uses good old-fashioned Hershey syrup in the brand new squeeze bottle. Rich, delicious chocolate flavor that only Hershey can deliver without making a mess. Delicious. Uh, Marvin? Good old Hershey syrup in a no-mess bottle. Excuse me, I'm Big Yellow and I love Kellogg sugar corn pops so much, I'd trade my Big Yellow flashlight for a bowl of those Big Yellow pops. <laughs> no! I love that taste so much, I'll give you my Big Yellow radio. No! Sugar corn pops have such a big taste, I'll give you my tennis ball, my guitar. Say, how do I get a bowl of those Big Yellow pops? Just ask. You drive a hard bargain. Kellogg sugar corn pops are part of your good breakfast and a smart start to your day. Those Big Yellow pops are tops. And now, back to Marlowe, with a salute to the International Year of the Child, to children all over the world. Marlowe is finding out how people lived 200 years ago. He's in Old Town, and he's in for a few surprises. For one thing, children at the dinner table weren't allowed to speak, unless spoken to first. We'll find out more about that when we join Marlo. There's Marlo 200 years ago. And there's my good friend, Mrs. Fitzrandolph. Marlo, come and have some food with us. Oh, how nice. I'm with you. Soup's on. <laughs> That's right. Soup is on. Oh, we are having soup. What a nice invitation. Oh, welcome. this looks beautiful. Welcome, Thank Marlo, you. Marlo, to our humble home. Nice my to be husband, here. My husband, my children. Nice of you to join us. Hi, children. Please sit down. Let's Thanks. Give you something to eat. Well, Marlo, oh, taste so Mrs. Fitzrandolph's onion soup. I Serve my husband first time. Hey, head of the table, yes, breadwinner, you get the soup first, okay. and why not? Mm. My wife is an excellent cook. I can smell it already. Explain to me what this soup is. Well, the soup is a king soup, and it's onion soup served mm. in fresh milk. Oh. So what else have we got on the table? Cornbread? The cornbread, uh -huh. and of course your uh, gingerbread, and then down here mm -hmm. we have a rum cake Beautiful. with the wild uh, blueberries. And this is a cranberry crisp. Oh. And Great. you have your chutney here. Can you explain to me what's in chutney? I well, know chutney is, uh, that particular chutney has watermelon rind and cantaloupe and raisins. Well, Would we're going like to try, try it, it on a right piece now. Of gingerbread? I think that's a great idea. All right. Mmm. Is this sort of a regular meal that you usually have? Yes, we we have our main meal and uh, we try to make it as interesting as possible. A good wife mm -hmm. is a good cook, Marla. I believe it, and it's being proven to me, even as we speak. Now, all of this you make here, you don't buy it, you don't go to a store or anything? No, no, everything we take, we're self-sustaining. So you grow your own grain and grind your own flour. Right. And find the blueberries and, and cranberries. Yes, those are wild blueberries. Mrs. Fitzrandolph, I notice the children don't talk too much, huh? Well, children are not permitted to talk at the table. Oh. The only time they can open their mouths is when they put food in it. I know a few young people who wouldn't like that idea, but I bet they'd love to try a spinning wheel. She's carding wool. Well. She's learning to spin. Mm -hmm. She does her ABCs on a piece of linen. And what about Jonathan? What does he do with himself? Oh, he's a very busy young man. He does uh, all of the chopping of the wood, and he clears the land with his father. He totes the milk, and he totes the water for me, and he does many, many things. A lot of work. Yes. Good kids. Good kids. When they go to bed at 6 o'clock, they're really tired. Wow. That's pretty early, huh? But you got to get up early, too, huh? 5 o'clock in the morning. We're up every morning. With the sun. Or before the, the sun. goes down very early, huh? Yeah. They do three or four hours in the field before I even get time to get their breakfast. Uh, You've enjoyed my wife's cooking, Marlo. Absolutely the most delightful colonial bites I've ever bitten. And I bit <laughs> off more than I could swallow, I think. Oh, oh I delicious. hear the school bell. It's time for you to go to school, children. Marlo, can you come to school with us? Come to school with you? Back to school? Sure, I'll even put your bonnet on for you. Let's go to school. Come on, Pat, Jonathan. Up we go. Let's put the bonnet on. Put it around here, and we're off. 
Thank you very much. So delicious, long. delicious food. Thank you, food. Milo, for visiting us. Oh, my pleasure. They're going to be late if they don't hurry. Mrs. Kerwin, the teacher, won't like that. The girls in the back, I'm going to give you some problems. Will you write these numbers down on your slates? And then you can add. And find the sum. $304.39. $291.09, $12.10. I'm sorry, Mr. Kerwin. Uh, you wouldn't believe me if I tried to explain it. I'm anything. afraid not. I'm sorry. I'll be good next time. I didn't know. Jonathan, remove your hat at once. I'm ashamed of you. Meredith, I'd like to hear you say the first two lines on your slate. Big A, little A, big B, little B, big C, little C, big D, little D, big E, little E, big F, little F, big G, little G. Very good, Meredith. I hope all the rest of you are doing as well. Now, Marlo, here's a problem for you. The salary of the President of the United States is $25,000 a year. What is that a day? <laughs> Machine, what's the answer? Sixty-eight dollars and forty-nine cents. Sixty-eight dollars and forty-nine cents. Excellent, Marlo. <sighs> Children, it's time for a recess. You may go out and have some fun. Recess? That's still fun. Two hundred years ago, young people played marbles and flew kites, played hide and seek, and hopscotch was very popular. Lots of things were much the same as they are today. But the blacksmith, that's a villain smithy, was the big man in town. Marlo's there now. Here's the blacksmith shop. My old buddy Carl is the smithy. Hi, Carl. Hi, Marlo. How, How are, you? are you? I'm fine, thanks. Uh, the village smithy, huh? You're the blacksmith. Well, that's what they call me. <laughs> What are you What are you making here? Well, we are uh, we're going to try and uh, uh, give you a few lessons on blacksmithing. Me? Yes, you. And uh, yeah. what we're going to do is uh, make a uh, monogram for the uh, magic uh, movie machine. Really, a 3M monogram for the magic movie? That's what we sure try.